Well, inevitably, when you uh, start growing your business, you add more employees, and every employee has a computer now. Well, how do you make that more efficient? We've got Sean Walker, our network expert. Thanks for coming in. You're most welcome. So I got, uh, let's say, 10 people in my company now. Everyone's got their own computer. When is it time to start looking at uh, a server? Well, it really depends on what you want to use the server for. What people are using it more and more is to basically have a central place to store all your sensitive data or data that multiple people need. So when you start going down that road, you need basically a large, a large amount of storage. So a place to store all your files, whether it's you know, price books or parts lists or what have you. So it's just a, a central place to store all that information. And uh, obviously um, things are getting easier to set these things up, but would you still recommend someone coming in to help set, set it up initially? Well, it depends on, on your level of expertise. I mean, you, for a very basic server, um, you can set it up yourself. But, but what happens is when you start setting that type of thing up and you don't really know the ins and outs, um, you can start making some common mistakes, you know, um, setting up permissions. So if you want only certain people to be able to have access to some data and not others, you know, just being smart about the initial setup, probably not a bad idea. Okay, but what if I, uh, you know, I've got people on notebooks and I want to be able to take that data Right. with me, like they leave the office. Well, there's two ways to that. There's information that's on the server that you want to have with you, but also there's the side of it where you have things on the laptop that you actually want to back up to the server. So there's two separate pieces to that. So from, from data that's on the server that you want to keep with you, there's two ways to tackle that. You can have some sort of routine that would actually automatically go and synchronize things from the server. So you, you go daily or, or hourly if you want and actually keep a copy of that locally. So that's one option. The other part to that is you could have remote access. So VPN software or virtual private network software is really common these days. So even if you are traveling, as long as you have an internet connection, you know, it's basically like you're at the office. Um, so that brings up a point, and you know, some people can't wrap their head around this. If you have your notebook with you and you're not connected to the office network, right. files can still be backed up. Absolutely. Now, the, the caveat to that, though, is you're now dealing with a slower speed connection. If you're in your office, you're pretty much directly connected. Yeah. So you could back up your entire laptop in a couple minutes, where over a, a VPN connection, it would be considerably slower. Obviously, you'd want to make the first main backup at the office, and I, I guess uh, it would back up incrementally. You don't have to back up the entire hard drive again if you're out on the go. That depends on the software that you're using to actually do the backup. And so, um, I mean, there's a couple different solutions as far as server. Obviously, you can get the, the big computer, but there's also um, external hard drives as well now that connect into your network. Absolutely. I mean, uh, is that a cheaper, easier solution? or? Well, really, one of those large network hard drives that you plug in is essentially a server. Okay. Right? So you, same, you're same doing thing. the same thing. Yeah. Now, you, because that's usually more of an appliance type server, you know, it has a certain set of features that you can't really add on or change. Yeah. You know, when you have a full, full blown server, you can add additional software packages. You can have it multi rolled. You can have it do multiple different, different applications. Well, let's talk about what makes up a, a central server. I mean, what, do you, what are you looking at there? Well, the most basic thing that you're going to use for a, a server is file storage, right? So that's, that's number one. That's the easiest thing to do. Um, from, from that's, that's where you would start. Yeah. <clears throat> Going from there, um, you could start doing like collaboration, and that's really where things are going. You're going more and more right now. I think you guys do some of that here. Um, like Microsoft has SharePoint, uh, Novell has Groupwise. There's a whole bunch of different applications, and what that does is, you know, when you store things on a server, you're sitting there looking at a, a file name, which could be cryptic or or whatever. When you have a collaboration site, you're actually uploading it, and then you can put descriptions along with it, right? You can have it tied to something else. So you're no longer just looking at a file name. You could have descriptions. Um, you could have it you know, as part of an overall agenda for a meeting, right? You know, here's all the files that are associated with that set. So we talked about SharePoint, which is Microsoft's um, kind of office-based. Yes. Um, it does make it a lot easier to get all these people on the same page, really, Absolutely. doesn't it? Um, Absolutely. And setting something like that up again, is that something a little, obviously a little more involved? Yes and no. You can start off very basically, but, but with, a, with a SharePoint system, you know, you make some common mistakes up front and then you could get stuck. So I really recommend either getting someone in or taking the time yourself to do some research on what you actually want to accomplish. Because with SharePoint, once you start going down a certain path, you get kind of stuck. Yeah. Right? You have to, you want to plan it out ahead of time. And somebody who has some experience doing that can really, you know, save you months and months of time. And money. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, I guess my final question then, uh, I mean, at what point, like how many computers or users would you recommend uh, someone start looking at a server solution? Really, I would say as little as two or three. 
okay. you know, once you start getting to that point, you know, even if, you know, from, from a business perspective now, your computer runs your business, right? It has all your emails, all your files, everything on it. Um, even though you might not need a server, you want a place to back up your computer to, right? So you have software that's going to actually, on a daily basis or what have you, take that snapshot of your data and upload it to the server, right? So it really saves you a ton, potentially. Like, you, if you're traveling, you could lose your laptop or you could drop it and blow up the hard drive. You will, well, you're not dead. You have a copy of that sitting at the office. Uh, backed up and redundant. That's great. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us, Sean. No problem. Sean Walker talking all about central servers.